This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realize how fucking garbage this content is. But if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back. For today's video, I am revealing what direction I've gone since I decided to ditch the Grand Marju and move on to greener pastures. For those who do follow the channel closely, you'll know I've been playing Grand Marju for the last couple of regionals I've played at and the last few locals events as well. However, we've decided to move on to something a bit more consistent and a little bit more in contention for meta runs. Whilst Grand Marju is a load of fun to take to regionals where it's unexpected taking it to locals every week where everyone knows what you're playing and has a very easy way to deal with it by either just signing the cards or making you go first turn one is kind of annoying. So we decided to play a deck that can do both however we are still going to opt for going second. And my deck of choice for this format of course is Sword Soul Tenyi. Now the reason I picked up this deck is number one because I can and number two it's not particularly difficult to learn the basics of but of course there's some more kind of uh intrinsic plays you can learn and improve upon along the way particularly with the 10 new parts of the deck for the most part though this deck is one of those decks that you can be losing everything and suddenly see one card and play out from there and go ahead and win the game it can really just snowball advantage out of nowhere and that's really quite cool it's also a really fair deck, so the hopes are that it won't get hit too badly on any upcoming lists, at least not whilst we're playing it. Now there is a bit of a risk that we fall into the whole Tri Brigade situation and that the deck kind of gets boring, but so he's losing all my games, so there you go. Now I'm definitely waffling on a little bit too much, but before we do get stuck into the video, check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. Link in the description to their eBay store. Go ahead and use the code RUFIO15 for 15% off and support the channel as well in doing the process. But anyway, I digress. Let's get stuck into the deck profile. Now, before we do get stuck in, I should probably give a big thank you to Carl over at Team Shift and the Team Shift boys. Uh, they've been piloting this deck, and this is primarily his build, which he's passed on to uh, Broads on my team, uh, which I've more or less carbon copied from there. Made one or two small changes according to taste, let's say. But for the most part, this is his uh let's say brainchild let's go with that one i'm kind of tired so i'm going to come up with some absolute nonsense i'm sure of it but anyway that's besides the point uh big shout out to him of course for making up this particular build um go check out their channel there'll be a link in the description and i think he's done a combo tutorial which you can go and check out as well really really helpful stuff really good player uh, and of course a really good deck as well but anyway enough nonsense let's get stuck into it okay so we're starting off with the monsters the more obvious stuff of course here triple moe uh, I'm sure I don't really need to elaborate on this. Triple Moe is kind of what you need to play, right? Uh, it's the one you want to see in your open hand most of the time. There are occasions where you choose not to normal summon it, um, but that really depends on the hand. Sometimes it's better to go for Taie and then get this off a special summon. You get a little bit more value that way, but uh, more often than not, this is going to be the one that you want to see and want to open with. Uh, we've got triple copies of Long One. Um, this is kind of just your second free synchro, right? Uh, it normally makes your Baron... Um, but it can also make ruddy rows and stuff like that. So yeah, again, it's another option that you can go for. A lot of the time you can bait with other stuff uh, and then summon this and still be able to play the game, which is quite nice. Unfortunately, it's one of those cards that sometimes you open it on its own and it's just unplayable, but that's just how it works. And we've got two copies of Taie. There's times where I really think like it would almost be good to have a third, but uh, I just it's just not necessary. Uh, as much as you want to see it, it's yeah, it's kind of the card that you're better off wanting to search as and when you need it rather than opening it. It's a bit of a weird conundrum, but you get the point. And then somewhere in there, kind of a pseudo Sword Soul card here. That is Ecclesia. Ecclesia, of course, another starter card. Um, it can effectively just be a free body into another Sword Soul card, depending on if you're going second, which usually in this build we are going to opt to do. So, uh, yeah, triple of this, really, really good. Again, unfortunately, you do sometimes open it on its own. However, there is some other things to know about this, and sometimes often overlooked. The fact that this is also a tuner, so it does have some additional playability for that purpose as well. Next up is the 10 portion of the deck. We've got triple Vishuda. Um, this one's really, really good, actually. Quite often this comes up for breaking boards. 
pretty obvious. Just bouncing cards is really, really nice. Being able to do it from hand or grave is really good. The amount of times you can summon another Tenyi, make the monk in your opponent does nothing because they obviously don't see you coming to use this, is just really, really good. We've got Ashuna. Again, just usually another free body, but also enables you to get into your Adhara for later plays down the line. Again, just a really, really good option. I think that this particular, uh, let's say this lineup works the best from what I've used so far and any testing that I've done. This has worked really, really well. And on to our final worm monster, the one that needs to absolutely fucking lootly be banned and sent to the goddamn Shadow Realm. Protoss, and then when it's not Protoss, it's just going to be Eschatos, another format, so there you go. Uh, Protoss, yeah, an absolutely ridiculous card that no doubt will be banned soon enough, and if it's not, Konami's really missed a trick there. Um, but I think you need to play it whilst it's available. Uh, just as a one-off, it's more than fine, but when it comes up, it's an absolutely dumb card. Now that is it for our monsters onto our spells. So we start off with our consistency spells. We've got triple emergence. Um, I'm not really sure I need to elaborate on this one either. It's a, it's a mandatory three of in my opinion. Uh, it just, yeah, it searches what, what's not to like. The other effect doesn't really come up all that much, but the search is absolutely incredible. Uh, we've got triple copies of Desires. Um, I know some people have played other pots in here. I think Desires is absolutely perfect for what this deck needs. Board Breakers, we've got triple Dark Ruler, no more. Um, yeah, it's Dark Ruler. Not much to add to that. It just it just ends turns. Uh, I did try playing it with Mystic Mind for a little while in some testing before. Uh, it just it just wasn't as strong for the most part. With the way this deck works, I, f I feel like Dark Ruler is just a better option. Triple Lightning Storm. Um, yeah, another board breaker. Not much to add to that. Uh, we've got triple copies of Forbidden Chalice. Good going first or second. Um, it doesn't lose to tactics. It doesn't lose to, like, Call by the Grave, all that kind of stuff. And, again, if you're going first, it's not terrible either. Triple Cosmic Cyclone. You need ways to outmine if your opponent's playing it. You need ways that are chainable to out things like Imperial Order if your opponent opens it. It deals with a lot of really problematic cards at the moment, or difficult cards, stuff like Scythe. Uh, stuff like Invoked, which seems to be everywhere at the moment. It can help deal with, like, Schism, uh, with the Field Spell, with Invocation itself. A few other really good cards. And then our final spell card is Call by the Grave. I just really like this. I think it's very, very strong. And then onto our trap cards themselves. Triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. Essentially the only hand trap that we're playing in here. Um, again, doesn't lose the talents. It's super impactful. And it's good going first or second. And then our final trap card for the deck. A single copy of Blackout. Now that does round up the main deck. Let's go on to the extra deck. Obligatory token. We've got two copies of Monk of the Ten Yi. Uh, two is absolutely fine. Third doesn't really come up unless you're in a weird scenario. The only time I've had the third come up is um, playing against Invoked, where they've sent stuff off Maximus, and I've chosen one of the monks because I didn't think I'd need it. And then the second one came up later in the game, which theoretically means I would need a third, but. It's like a weird one-off scenario. Uh, a single copy of Shaman of the Ten Yi works absolutely fine as is. Can be really, really handy for rebuilding your board. Um, can help fix some awkward scenarios, but again, it doesn't come up loads, but when it does, it's really, really good. On to our synchros here. Two copies of Qi Zhao and a single copy of Cheng Ying. Uh, this is absolutely fine as is. You don't need more of either of these. These are just perfect as they are. Onto our Yang Zings, a single copy of Yazi, two copies of Baxia. Uh, Baxia is, yeah, it's just awesome. I go into this card so much. This is really, really good when you open stuff like, say, Taiye and a Tenyi, because you can do a lot of combo stuff from there. Summoning Monk, using Taiye to make this, uh, dumping a Moyi, and then using this to pop the Monk to summon back the Moyi and going to another Synchro from there. Really, really nice. Being able to spin up to two cards, usually it's just the one, but sometimes it's the two as well. Uh, can be really, really strong as well. Just a really, really good card overall. Um, I've recently added the second copy. I wasn't playing this before. I was playing Crimson Blader, but it never comes up. Uh, and the second one's just good for later game. We've got a single copy of Chao Feng as well to round off those Yang Zings. This is a really, really strong card. Doesn't come up super, super often, but when it does, it's a very, very strong option. And one that you should definitely consider running. A single copy of Drag Eye. It's just, again, another negate. What's not to like about it? White Aura Whale is really, really strong. Um, the amount of games I win with this alone, being able to punch two cards. If your opponent goes on the defensive, a lot of the time your opponent is going to... If they know the being forced to go first, they're going to set up their board with a lot of stuff in defense. You're going to be able to pierce for a bunch of damage. You're going to be easy to get rid of stuff off the board. It means you don't necessarily lose under mine if there's one monster on the field. Because weird scenarios like that come up. Uh, White Aura Whale can help you punch through it. It means stuff like Crooked Cook is another way to deal with it. 
uh, and just stuff like that. It's just a really, really strong card. I really enjoy it. And of course, the fact that it can bring itself back as well by banishing a water is really cool. We've got one Draco Berserker of the Tenyi. Uh, not much to say about this. It's just a free banish, essentially, uh, and just a big boy, kind of just a good option. And then our two tens, we have Ruddy Rose. Uh, I think you need to play it. More often than not, I'll make this uh, just to deal with any graveyard-based decks a couple of turns in. Get rid of all their resources. I was playing up against Prank Kids the other day. Just eat all the Prank Kids and there's not much they can do. And then our final card, the obligatory Baron de Fleur. Uh, yeah, just a very really strong card. It didn't need the pop effect as well, which is just ridiculous. Um, yeah, this it's, it's card's pretty silly. Uh, so whilst it's available, definitely need to use it. And that does conclude our extra deck onto the side deck. Okay, so we start off with triple copies of Droll and Lockbird. Again, we're not playing many hand traps. The ones we do want to play have to be high impact. And Droll and Lockbird is one of those. It needs to be hand traps that completely end turns, can win games on their own. Droll and Lockbird's really the only one that does it for me. You could also include Nibiru, but I don't really like it in this. I don't think you need it at all. Um, and none of the other hand traps really do anything other than impermanence. All the others are just okay. And so if you're going to play them again, you just want to max out on them. And that way you don't lose the talents. Um, and if you do, you're going to have punished your opponent sufficiently in the meantime. That hopefully it means that it makes a hell of a difference in the game. It's a point where you can win. Now we have a bunch of go first cards in the side. Triple copies of anti-spell fragrance. This is basically just imperial order. This card just ends turns. There's not really much more to say than this. You just play your entire turn. You set this. Sure, you don't get the negate that you get with Imperial Order, but you do get free wins anyway because your opponent is unlikely to be able to deal with this card. Triple Goblies of Dimensional Barrier. Good in the mirror match um, to some degree, I guess. Good against Bird. Good against fusion-based decks, which we've seen a lot of with the likes of DPE. More often than not, you can flip this on an Anaconda and end people's turns and kill them the following turn from there. Just a really, really strong card. Again, just a great option. I think you need to play it. We have triple copies of Evenly Matched. Again, not all decks lose to sort of traditional back row hate. There's also a lot of decks that are maining Imperial Order or siding it in. This helps you to deal with that because you're going to force your opponent into a position where they either want to keep an Imperial Order or keep the rest of the board or one other card that they really need. Um, on to our final two traps for this. We have one copy of Red Reboot, uh, just anti-trap hate. Imperial Order, anti-spell hate. And a single copy of Harpy's Feather Duster for those back row heavy decks. And that, my amigos, is all for today's deck profile. Hopefully this has given you some ideas of the kind of ratios you might want to run. Or maybe if you're new to the deck, some ideas on what to start off with to give you an idea of how to go about building the deck. If you're someone who already plays the deck and you're looking for some ideas, or maybe you have some suggestions on things I should tweak in the build, I'm definitely open to those ideas. Again, I'm very new to the deck, so it's definitely not going to be a perfect build. Once again, a big shout out to Carl over at Team Shift. Go ahead and check the link out in the description to their channel. Go ahead and give them a subscribe. Again, I'm sure they'll have tons of really good content coming your way soon. And if you haven't hit subscribe on this one, you should definitely do so as well. But anyway, that's definitely enough waffling from me. I am absolutely fucking shattered and talking absolute rubbish. So once again, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one.